they put you on a, uh, a guilt trip. Uh, they worked very hard uh, with me. I never felt guilty about taking these positions, <laughs> to tell you the truth. But what they'll do is say, oh, you're not going to vote for the war fund. You're against the truth. You're un-American. And you don't care about our Constitution. You don't care about the people sacrificing their lives to protect my freedoms. How, is, how in the world can sending people to Iraq and Afghanistan and Syria and all these places fighting wars that are illegal, protecting our Constitution. Woo. And people buy into that stuff. Yeah. And, then, and then they say, well, it's in national, national interest. Well, why is, why is it in, that, in the national interest? Maybe the oil companies, maybe the yeah. bankers, and, and maybe the military industrial complex, it might be in their interest, but uh, no. It, it is not in the interest of the United States citizens, not in your interest, and hopefully the people will, will wake up and say, we can have a strong defense, we can defend ourselves, we can stand for principles of liberty, and we will work hard to, to spread our message, but not with guns and bullets. Why don't we set an example of a prosperous economy that recognizes personal liberties, and believe me, that would come a time when the prosperity would be such that we would probably be looking for people to come help us out because there'd be so many jobs available instead of us needing to build fences and shooting people who are trying to come here for, for various different reasons. Instead, we go over and we create chaos in the Middle East in these illegal wars, and then we have set the standard for migration of millions of people, at least hundreds of thousands of people, about to, they're in the Europe, they're going to flood Europe, but it's all, well, it's multicultural, this is very good. I'm, I'm for multiculturalism. I think the United States is, uh, has done handled that pretty well. But it's one rule you have to follow. It has to be voluntary. No force. No, no force on people. problem that you'll have to uh, face, and a matter of fact, you are facing, we are all facing it right now, because we're in the midst of a bankruptcy. Uh, the country's broke. I mean, the, the warning sign of the uh, inevitability of uh, what we're facing today came in 1971 when we were pseudo, we were committed to a pseudo gold standard that if foreigners came in with $35, we'd give them an ounce of gold until we we're about to run out of gold, so we had to quit that. But it's lasted a lot since then, but we are bankrupt. We are totally insolvent. We don't have the cash flow that we need to make sure everybody has medical care and free education. Free is, you know, not quite so. <laughs> Pass it on, you know, they, they talk about passing it on to the next generation. It's not going to be passed on to the next generation. It's going to be passed on to this generation. We're all paying the bills because our country is not producing. That's what Washington is all about. They're at an impasse, and both sides will not admit to the real problems of overspending, too much printed paper money, too many troops overseas, and they're, they just won't admit this. They say, oh no, people still like dollars, we still use them, so we're going to keep being the world leader, we're going to keep being the policeman of the world, and we're going to have a reserve currency of the world, we'll just get print the money that we need. And so far, pretty good, except for the last 10, 15 years, if you look at the economic statistic, productivity is down. This is what the turmoil was all about in this last election. There's a decreased standard of living for a lot of people. The Austrian School of Economics teaches if you do destroy a currency, the currency of a country, or the currency of a world, by just printing too much money, you will destroy the middle class. And that is what's happening in this country today. And that's why people were unhappy. That's why working class people were willing to vote Republican. You know, this sort of thing. Because they know there's something wrong. And fortunately, we have had some success here in the last five, six, seven, eight years now of emphasizing the real cause of our financial problem. Of course, it's overspending and debt, but the real culprit is the Federal Reserve System that has some of the world.